later, Dr Tracy and Paula are in trouble as poachers visit their camp. Can Clarence the cross-eyed lion come to the rescue on Daktari at nine? But first, the Thamesmen. George. Ha ha! We are here. We have arrived at the almighty gothic tombstone of Rush. Tombstone? Well, a cenotaph or. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that, maybe. I know. I'm getting settled in. Hello, everyone. My name is Alex, and I'm in San Francisco. I'm. George, I'm in Los Angeles, where it's hot as Hades here. Do you have an aircon machine? No, I don't, but I'm coming up tomorrow to see you and use yours. Uh, uh, I know what you're going to do. You're going to just, like, kick mine on the way out. I'm going to I'm gonna load it into my pickup truck, and I'm gonna, you're going to wake up on, like, Sunday morning and go, I'm sure I had an aircon somewhere. That's what you're dealing with, ladies and gentlemen. So you find us in the... I've got an aircon machine. <laughs> um, <laughs> you, uh, you found us in the middle of Rush Week, and uh, the reason why I said you've, you were at the... Uh, the the cenotaph of Rush is this is it we're going for the mega one that uh, that Sean has told us to, yeah to no, yeah so so we've got a we we've got a boatload of notes on this one and I do think that it's worth almost reading most of them because that so you don't have to bear with us because this is a long track but the notes really help with the concept and the idea because this is a prog rock classic and and so Sean thank you Sean. Um, do you want me to read some of these? Do you think? Yeah, what's what on? Well, we're, we're, on, on a, we're doing Hemispheres, Cygnus, X1, Book 1 and 2, blended and edited chronologically. So that's a nice little neat little number that rolls off the tongue. <laughs> and as Sean, Sean says that it is combined, uh, you know, uh, books wanted to combine to make possibly the greatest prog rock tracks Russia have ever produced, which puts it in contention for possibly the greatest prog rock creation ever. I think some people might argue with him on that one. Some of the Yes fans might, but we will see, won't we? Oh, can so... you imagine an argument between two prog rock groups? <laughs> It would go on for 45 minutes. It would just like. <laughs> <laughs> and then they would stop for part two, right? Oh, and then they would talk in different keys. And then they would, <laughs> someone would come up and punch someone and, and then suddenly slip into seven, eight. <laughs> It'd be just different rhythms. Be like... <laughs> exactly. And then, and then go off stage and then come back and uh, kind of, you know, in a spaceman outfit as part four. <laughs> Just, uh, that's a fight I'd pay for. I'd pay I to would see pay for. I want to so see who, who, who would win, R Rush or Yes? Oh, Yes, because there's more of them. Well, Rush would rush in, but every oh. time they get par, every time they get punched, everyone would go Yes. <laughs> that's that's a terrible. It would get him with a roundhouse. Uh, aha! Ooh, oh, oh, very oh. clever, sir. I know. I know. Thank you very much. Coming, yeah, coming in with a kidney punch and a Cygnus what X one. <laughs> the spaceship. So, right. Sorry uh, about that. <laughs> uh, so, so should I read these notes? And so please bear with us because, and we will put them in. Maybe put them in our Patreon page. These notes because uh, they're definitely worth reading. And uh, but uh, let me because I think. This track, it's a long track, so some long notes to go with it. So can bear with me? Are you sitting comfortably? Uh, so it says, in today's song, Neil creates a fable on the concept of whether to follow your head or your heart. Uh, the story being built upon the Olympian gods from Greek mythology, tackling the concept of rhyme or reason. It wonders whether being ruled by our left brain or our right brain is better. The album Hemispheres includes imagery and concepts based on the hemispheres of our brains. There you go. Um, so far this week, we've had four days explored Rush playing reasonably compact songs in a range of styles. But still, for many people, their impression of Rush is they're merely prog rock and that they play long epic songs. To be fair, Rush 
have created some pretty epic concept songs and albums. And it's not surprising they ended up with this reputation. Today, we're going to dive deep into that part of Rush. Uh, so 2112, uh, which we have covered, is probably the, the most famous of these epics, especially as it has the album title and the Starman logo that remind people of it. 2112 is also the album that gave them their artistic freedom as the record company hated it, but the fans flocked to it. Uh, for today's video, we're going to check out Cygnus X One Story, uh, but it's not from one album. It's It was a concept so big that it spanned two albums. Side two of the album of Farewell to Kings finished with a 10 minute song called Cygnus X One Book One The Voyage. And the entire side one of the next album, Hemispheres, was devoted to Cygnus X One Book Two Hemispheres as an 18 minute song. All up, it's 28-minute combined work, a pretty massive effort, even for Rush. In their first appearance on US national TV, 33 years after their first album, mind you, in spite of 24 gold and 14 platinum records, including three multi-platinum awards, Robert Colbert uh, jokingly asked them if they ever got to the end of one of their songs, only to find that they were being influenced by themselves at the beginning of the song, since it happened so much earlier in their career, <laughs> which is that's pretty cool. So, so to the story. Cygnus X1 is the actual name of the first astronomical object that scientists widely accept as being a black hole. Book One, The Voyage, is written as a fairly literal concept of an astronaut traveling across the stars into a black hole. Book Two, Hemispheres, is a blend of mythology and fiction using the Greek gods of Apollo and Dionysus as illustrations of the ideas of following our head or our heart. The events in Book One actually took place in the middle this is confusing. In the middle events of book two. So rather than listen to them separately, we're going to listen to a version that splices the story into the right chronological order. Uh, book two, Hemisphere, starts by portraying that from our earliest days, every human has been fought over by the gods of wisdom and the god of love in a struggle to rule their behavior. Uh, at first, Apollo shows man the wonders of knowledge, giving humans the ability to build fine things and farm and discuss important topics. At first, the people are ecstatic, but after a while, they stop progressing. Dionysus steps in and shows their lives are missing meaning, that love fills the void in their hearts. The humans put aside the knowledge of wisdom and head off to live out in the forests in the spirit of brotherhood, but eventually they run out of food and the ability to protect themselves from nature. Lost, they fight amongst themselves or become aimless, unable to resolve whether logic or love will save them. A few people decide to put their faith in folklore, telling of answers attainable by traveling into Cygnus XI. There's more. Uh, are you still there? Book one, The Voyage, simply tells the story of the fable's protagonist flying his spaceship into the black hole, hoping something that other than annihilation awaits for him. But this story doesn't provide any answers. Book two, Hemispheres, then continues on describing the protagonist entering Olympus, the realm of gods, where they're battling over, where, over whatever gods battle over. They eventually communicate with our hero and a solution is settled on. Which is really cool. But actually, the next paragraph, well, I was going to stop there, but I want to read just the next paragraph. Note the spaceship's name is Rosonante, which Pert borrowed from the book Don Quixote, uh, being the name of the hero's horse. Having never read that book, it's beyond my ability to fully describe why he chooses this name. But I do know that in Don Quixote, the main character needs to find a name suitable for his horse. Rosonante is apparently a subtle play on words, but it can refer to an old clapped out horse and also indicates transformation through the deeds in the story to a noble steed. From what I understand, it means a workhorse, but it, it will, but also that it was an old, it was an old workhorse. Now, the reason I like that paragraph is because there was a TV show uh, called The Expanse, which was a sort of sci-fi epic drama. And the heroes in that, their spaceship, they end up capturing, they rename Rosinante. So I just thought that was a, like a nice nod to either Don Quixote or maybe Rush. Who knows? At, at what point in the day, do you sit down and think, right, I'm going to write about the two hemispheres of the brain and spaceships and stuff? At what yeah. point is it? After your coffee or before your coffee? Well, OK, but here, okay, I'm going to skip it a little bit because we, 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 there's, there's a whole section here about some... This is, it's all, so we'll put it in the notes in, in Patreon, but there's one thing... So one last thing to consider when listening to this is that the guys were only around 25 years old when they, they conceived and produced these works. They must have been doing a lot of acid. <laughs> or very, very long winters in Canada. Very long winters in Canada and very big amounts of acid. Yeah. I, I, you know, Johnny Cash sings about V8 engines and one piece of a time stealing a car. These right. guys 
Jesus. All right. Greek Ladies gods, black holes, space travel, and the nature of, of, of uh, rhyme and reason. Ladies and gentlemen, this is 28 minutes and 10 seconds. So if you need a pee, off you go now. We've worked this bit out. You pause. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> God, I forgot about that. It's not, yeah. It's not it's real not, time, is it? It's not no. real time. It's oh, pause. Yeah. All right, pause. Pause. <laughs> on technology. YouTube's never going to catch on. Well, no, we can't. Can. We're not going to stop. We've just got to go straight through. And we're not going to stop the music. Uh, we're just going to go straight through. We never stop the music. But uh, I'm looking yep. forward to this one. Actually, yep. I always thought that Rush was a massive, big, geeky prog rock band. And we've actually had the smaller quick hit so i'm actually really looking forward to this yeah exactly because this yeah exactly when we, we did cover 2112 and that was a good long track and that was fascinating and great so let, yeah let's see what they got all right let's do it we better get on i'm gonna be like you know I, i'm well, I'm gonna dehydrate from the heat over here it's made my hair all frizzy look at it it's i'm gonna be like minute. three years i'm gonna have a beard by the time this is finished no you're not are you ready sir <laughs> i could grow one if i wanted all right mm. not <laughs> Three, two, one, boom. Good beginning.
now we're on to the voyage, which is from book one, apparently. How do they remember everything?
was epic, that bit. Yeah, it was brilliant. That's him being sucked into the black hole. <laughs> I like that. Nice touch.
We can walk our road together if our goals are all the same. We can run alone and free if we pursue a different aim. Let the truth of love be lighted. Let the love of truth shine clear. Sensibility. With sense and liberty, with the heart and mind united in a single perfect state. Wow. <laughs> Could you believe that? That was 28 minutes. I could have done that for another 28 minutes. Didn't feel that's amazing, isn't it? That yeah. is like I was hooked. I, I mean, I must say, I was I was reading the lyrics as they went along, and, and like when we edit it, I, I think I'll try and do a way to put the different books, the lyrics, because I mean, thank you, Sean. Thank you, Sean, yeah. for putting all that together because I don't think we could have gone into that track without those notes and without the understanding and 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 i wonder if every i mean obviously we said this is a a a, a fan blended and edited chronological story i wonder what purists think about it being cut up and put into different order if or if that's the way everyone wants to hear it but it was great to do it is the story i, I mean to the music well the musician level is just off, 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 off literally sorry to do a pun but off this planet <laughs> I mean, the bass playing was superb. Oh, and there was just some segments in it which were just so surprising, and you know, I just like there was there was every texture in that piece, you know, from the beginning to the end. It was, I mean, anyone else would have made like ten hit records out of that. I I, I still don't know how you know. I kind of you know the old joke here. I've written a song. It goes a bit like this. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, you know, I, I mean, like, can you imagine Getty just walking in? He goes, "Well, let me hum it. <laughs> you know, just see if you can keep along." You know how they pulled that together because the the stabs and the changes, and you know, it was incredibly polished. I, I mean, love to know, like, if if they performed, what form they performed this live as individual tracks or as a single piece or you know did they perform it live you know what i mean how how did it how did it sort of come out in the world when it was first formed you know yeah 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 i mean obviously and again the drumming oh. but he, I yeah, mean, he wrote it as well i you say again he wrote a lot of it didn't he neil writes the songs i mean i didn't I, you know i knew about him as a musician, you always hear his name, but I never got into Rush. I, n I was never, you know, never had the time to get into it. And, and so everyone used to talk about him and like Neil Pern. Neil. Now I'm listening to him, Jesus Christ. He's just clinical, isn't he? Yeah, amazing. Absolutely amazing. And, and like, I wonder, they, they, they sort of, their whole formation, their existence was in the time of vinyl. Yeah. And vinyl kind of put limits on, you know, obviously they didn't, they pushed theirs to the limit by spreading it across a couple of albums. But I wonder if they'd been at their height of their powers in a time where there wasn't the medium limits, like the the limit of a, of a 33 record or whatever it was. I wonder what they would have done. I wonder what they would have come up with, you know? Also, back then, you can make a lot of money out of music. You can't do that now. And, and it, you know, you, well, you can, but you, the, the, the line, Feast and Famine, you have more time, you had more experimentation. Could Would a band do have the luxury of doing this now a 28 minute opus yeah. are there bands doing that now there, maybe there are up in finland and whatever we've seen some you know and uh but are they are they uh, but are they they sort of creating something that then sells millions you know they're not yeah i mean the nearest you get to it would be epica right maybe yeah yeah i mean i mean muse just came out with a new album uh, which has got some blinding tracks on it. Now they're not eight minute epics and twelve. They're, they're, you know, it's a Muse album, but it's a proper album. You know, and it's it's got a whole range of songs on it. You know, so yeah. people are making albums, and they they would have gone to the studio and created those over 
six months a year or whatever it may be. So there are people for sure doing it. But... I reckon, yeah. Anyway, uh, just, I don't know, just mind-blowing. Mind-blowing that you could pull that together, have the musicianship to do a 28-minute, I mean, just in each individually, you can pick out amazing guitar solos, the drumming throughout, and the. I think out of all of it, it showed the bass playing of Get It Off really, really well. Yeah, no, that was just amazing. Yeah, and and, and just, yeah, the different timings and everything. Wow. I loved it. I loved it. Well, thank you, Sean. Thank you very much for Rush Week. And No uh, way we could have done that on our own. No, no. way. No, and um, as uh, George said, uh, we'll leave the notes, John, uh, Sean's ex uh, uh, extended notes in, in the Patreon channel, which we'll put down there yeah. um, for you to read. But, yeah, um, and, uh, and, and and I'll try and try and, when we edit this, I'll try and put the lyrics in as well so you can read along, because I think that, that really helped me. And it was... Uh, yeah. yeah, I was wondering how you knew we were in a black hole. Oh, because I read the notes. <laughs> 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 Not <gonna tell>. All right. <laughs> thank you very much everyone i hope you've enjoyed rush week i have i've learned a lot so thank you and sean once awesome. again thank you very much awesome awesome all right we'll see you on the um other side album of black two hole. flip side four opus of the other side of the black hole exactly see you there take care are you dionysus or apollo <laughs> <laughs>